NASA wants SpaceX to speed up its development of Starship and its operations of Starship while its competitors want to slow it down using government regulations as an excuse. So I'm going to break this all down. This is several pieces of news here that have been coming out over the past week and a half, starting with an article today from Space News breaking down the NASA key decision point C, which uh, occurred a few weeks ago, but was not really talked about, not really released. So Space News got a hold of it and they found out that NASA gave SpaceX only a 70% chance of launching Starship Human Landing System HLS. That is the uh, land air, the landing system that will take astronauts to the surface of the moon and bring them back up. NASA is giving that only a 70% chance of being ready by February of 2028. Now, for those of you who have lost track, right now Artemis 3, which is that mission, is get currently scheduled for September of 2026. Those of who have been paying attention know that that 2026 date was not realistic for several reasons, not just for Starship HLS, but other factors as well. I want to go back in time five years to March of 2019 when Vice President Mike Pence made an announcement that at the time it was before even Artemis it was called the Exploration Mission 3 that is the return of humans to the surface of the moon NASA had that mission scheduled roughly for 2028 and Mike Pence without really involving NASA in this decision it was actually mostly a political decision decided that was going to be 2024 so all of a sudden EM3 which turned into Artemis 3 the, the landing was happening in 2024 and then 2025 and now 2026 and September 2026 there's like absolutely no chance of it happening then. So realistically to 2027. And at that time of that announcement five years ago, I'm on record saying that's not realistic. And I wouldn't be surprised if it still happens in 2028. For that NASA key decision point C to determine that Starship has a 70% chance of being ready for that human landing for Artemis 3 by February 2028, it does not surprise me in the least. Also, you have to keep in mind that the Human Landing System Award wasn't awarded until two years after that announcement. So it wasn't until April of 2021 that Starship was awarded or SpaceX was awarded the Starship HLS contract. And then it was slowed down by lawsuits and bid protests. And I'm not going to go into that. But basically, HLS, no matter who was chosen, was going to be delayed. Eventually, NASA did award a second contract to Blue Origin for Blue Moon. That's the second HLS contract. SpaceX has the contract for Artemis 3 and 4, and Artemis 5 is currently scheduled with Blue Moon. And I've said before that they could always, if they needed to, if, absolute, like, if they absolutely needed to, they could swap that and have Blue Moon go first. But Blue Moon's not going to be ready by 2026 either. So regardless... 2026 is not when we are returning humans to the surface of the moon. But NASA really is relying on SpaceX to make this happen. And so NASA really is saying that they need to have the propulsion demo mission happen next year. Like NASA is really saying we need to get Starship moving along. We need SpaceX to get Starship moving along. Meanwhile, last night there was an article that came out by TechCrunch saying that the numbers of Starship launches out of Florida is actually more than we thought it would be or the maximum that SpaceX wants to do, let's say, is more than we initially thought it would be. And this is coming out through the environmental impact statement process. The FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, has a process where they look at the environmental impact on launches and landings, and they determine what kind of impact it's going to have on the region and they look at many different factors. We assumed certain numbers per year of Starship launches and now it turns out those numbers are larger than we thought. Before I break down these numbers, just a little bit of nomenclature. So Kennedy Space Center is run by NASA, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station is run by the Space Force and generally together they are called Cape Canaveral Spaceport. So just out of like sheer ease of speaking. I'm going to call them all Cape Canaveral, um, but just understand I'm, two ta I'm talking about two different government entities here that are directly next to each other. The numbers that TechCrunch is currently reporting are up to 44 launches of Starship out of Kennedy Space Center Slick 39A and up to 76 times for Cape Canaveral Space Force Station Slick 37 or the alternative is to not use 37, but instead build a brand new launch pad that would be called Slick 50. And so total 120 Starship launches out of Florida is what they are evaluating. 
That's a huge number. But that's not happening next year. That's not happening the year after. That's happening down the line. That's what they want to look at for their future growth. I actually don't see anything wrong with this as long as the FAA comes back and says that it is environmentally safe for them to be doing this and they have all the infrastructure in place. But there were two competitor companies that submitted public comments about a, a little over a week ago. And because Blue Origin has been historically more aggressive over the years with SpaceX's growth, um, they got all the attention, but I actually want to talk about ULA first because ULA's comments were longer and, and sort of just as bad. And so um, first off, I want to say that there were some legitimate concerns that were posted in these comments. I only read the ones by Blue Origin and ULA. There's a whole bunch of public comments. Um, that's for the FAA and SpaceX to look at. The legitimate concerns, I think, which is probably what they're already looking at. They want to look at the impact of Starship on the environment. So like the air, the water, the surrounding wildlife especially like scrub jays, um, you know, just all these environmental impacts that naturally Cape Canaveral is very concerned about protecting. There's a whole Merritt Island Wildlife National Refuge there as a past and future resident of Brevard County. I completely applaud them for wanting to be concerned about, you know, wildlife and air quality and water um, runoff and all these other things that the EIS is going to be looking at. There was also legitimate concerns regarding things like traffic and um, air control and, you know, in terms of planes and the impact of supplies and all kinds of infrastructure questions, which are also legitimate concerns and also things that need to be addressed. So I'm not throwing out these public statements as saying that they're all terrible, but there were some choice things that were put in here that were anti-competitive. And that's where I got really upset. I believe that businesses should be competing against each other without one business asking another government to hobble its competitor. But I'm going to read you some of these statements and you can make your own conclusions. ULA's public statements say, um, in part, the EIS must evaluate whether impact from SpaceX's planned operations and the proposed launch cadence at LC-39A would obstruct assured access to space by harming other launch competitors. So what they're saying here is that SpaceX hopes to launch so many times, and we're talking strictly here about Starship. We're not even talking about Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy. We are talking only about Starship launches here. ULA is concerned that SpaceX is gonna launch so many times with Starship that ULA is gonna go out of business. Like that is essentially what they're saying here. So if you don't know the term as short access to space, um, pretty much the United Launch Alliance was founded on this concept where they had Lockheed Martin and they had Boeing and the two were competitors and the uh, you know, Department of Defense wanted to ensure that there would always be launches for national security. So the two competitors combined created ULA and said that we are going to have an assured access to space to make sure that there's always going to be somebody, some American vehicle that can launch national security payloads. Things have changed since ULA has been formed, um, roughly, I think it hasn't been 20 years yet, but you know, things have changed quite a lot in two decades where now we do have SpaceX taking on a huge number of national security payloads and, and winning national security launch uh, payload awards. And ULA is seeing that they could be put out of business because SpaceX is so much more successful than them. So ULA is saying to pretty much to their defense government customers, there is a risk here that you're only gonna have SpaceX operational because we might go out of business if SpaceX is too successful. And therefore we want you to hobble SpaceX to ensure that we are still in existence so you can have two different providers. You want that redundancy of providers. I have a real problem with this. I don't know about you, maybe you have a different opinion, but I have a real problem with the competitor saying that we can't keep up with our competitor's success, so we want the government to step in and slow them down. To me, that, that's anti-competitiveness, it's anti-capitalist, it's anti-American. Now, of course, you don't want a monopoly, and that's a whole separate video, a whole separate discussion of whether or not SpaceX has a monopoly. Um, I don't, I don't believe they do. You also don't want it to turn into a monopoly situation where there truly is only one provider and that smaller companies can't fit in, which is so funny talking about this because just a decade ago, SpaceX was the underdog and ULA was uh, the, um, the traditional heritage launcher coming from you know Boeing and Lockheed Martin. So just like a paragraph later in ULA's statements, it says, competition is essential in this second generation space race. And in that same paragraph, it says, but as in any race, competition is key to pushing that progress farther and faster. 
And I just find that hilarious because it's complaining that SpaceX is going farther and faster with Starship in addition to Falcon that they want so the government to step in. We want you government to step in and stop SpaceX from going farther and faster so that we can try to stay in business. I have a real problem with that attitude. I do wanna talk about Blue Origin because their comments while shorter were a bit more egregious in certain areas. They did focus a lot on the you know wildlife, the environment, the traffic, that kind of thing, which I have no problem with. But then um, they make some recommendations. Capping the rate of Starship super heavy launch landing and other operations, including but not limited to test firings, transport, operations and fueling. So that was their very first recommendation is to cap SpaceX's activities with Starship. Blue Origin is so afraid that they can't catch up with SpaceX that they literally want the government to cap SpaceX's Starship operations and testing and all of that. I want to give an analogy in a moment, but let me read this second recommendation here. Limiting Starship super happy operations to particular limited times to minimize and make predictable their impact on local community and allotting other launch providers the right of first refusal or schedule priority for certain conflicting launch or other operational opportunities. Blue Origin is not only asking the government to cap SpaceX's operations, but also limit it to certain times of the day or certain times of the week or month, so they don't say, and also give SpaceX's competitors, that is Blue Origin, uh, the first uh, the first mover advantage. Here's the analogy that comes to my mind. It's not a perfect analogy, but I live in the Atlanta metro area, and the Atlanta airport is the busiest in the world by number of passengers. There are some 2,000 to 3,000 flights coming in and out of Atlanta every day, and it is the hub for Delta. Delta Airlines, its headquarters are here. They have almost half of that business going in and out of Atlanta. And I don't know what Delta's competitors think about that, but I don't believe that Delta's competitors, you know, the other airlines would be very successful in saying, we think Delta is so successful here in the Atlanta airport that we want the Atlanta airport or the government of Atlanta or the FAA to cap the number of Delta launches out of Atlanta and to limit the number of Delta launches to specific times and not just launches, but operations, fueling, et cetera. That's not going to go over very well. And I know it's not a perfect analogy to space flight, but that's how I see this, is that Blue Origin is saying that we can't compete with the sheer number of launches, the sheer business that our competitor is doing, that we want the government to step in and limit that business and restrict that business to certain times. I mean, I just don't even know where they come up with this stuff. Like, how is that going to go over? How is that going to benefit the state of Florida, the region of Brevard County, the, you know, surrounding cities of Titusville, Cape Canaveral, Coco, etc.? Like, they want that business. <laughs> I don't think the city of Atlanta would say, actually, we want fewer passengers. We want to limit Delta. No, it's a huge money making business for the city of Atlanta to have Delta operations be almost half of the flights in and out of the Atlanta airport and it is a huge money-making business for everybody involved in the region of Cape Canaveral for them to have so much activity happening just now with SpaceX Falcon 9 and a little bit of Falcon Heavy. And imagine when Starship is going to launch and the amount of business and tourists, et cetera, that come in for those launches. There is safety considerations to go over and uh, that is legitimate. I haven't discussed that yet, but like just on a pure business aspect, I don't see the anti-competitive nature of those statements from Blue Origin and ULA hopefully going anywhere. And I think it really points to the fact that they are I think it really points to the fact that they are really afraid for their futures. And so from going back to the imperfect analogy, if other airlines aside from Delta want to have the chance to launch off runways, then maybe they should get in line and start taxing on that runway instead of trying to limit the number of Delta aircraft that are flying, right? So just launch more. I do want to get into one more consideration here, which is the fact that Starship is testing right now. It is not operational. It is experimental, very much so. It is currently testing in Boca Chica, Texas. It started um, it's, it started its first launches out of Boca Chica in April of last year. So it hasn't been testing for very long, just over a year. Um, and, and we have seen the environmental impact of those tests. And so there is a legitimate concern that if there is an explosion, if there is a crash back in the launch site, you know, with, with the tower not catching it properly, if there is any kind of problem that happens with a very new 
uh, with a very new spacecraft, a very new vehicle, like that could really severely impact the operations out of Cape Canaveral. And one of them, I think it was ULA, made comments like, we should be very careful about limiting national security missions by having an accident or limiting access to launch from Cape Canaveral because we need to have that assured access to space. ULA actually suggested that SpaceX just continue to launch Starship out of Boca Chica and not so much out of Cape Canaveral. And it is a legitimate concern that we do not have an operational vehicle yet. You know, NASA is saying, to SpaceX, we want you to hurry up with these developmental milestones for Starship so that we can get the fuel test done by 2025 and have that uncrewed demo to the surface of the moon without astronauts so that we can be ready for Artemis 3. But nobody wants a Starship accident out of Cape Canaveral. Honestly, it's a legitimate concern when it comes to national security. I've heard this not in terms of Starship. I've heard this in terms of um, natural disasters like a hurricane or flooding or what if an adversary attacks Cape Canaveral. You don't want to have all of your national security launches coming out of one place. Um, you do have Vandenberg, of course, and, and other sites um, and other launch sites that could also launch national security payloads. But um, it is a concern to have so much activity out of Cape Canaveral. A couple of years ago, I did a report looking at the reasons for launch delays that are greater than a day and weather was number one, but out of Cape Canaveral and only out of Cape Canaveral, launch congestion was a problem. There's just so many players and you have to take turns. We're not at the point yet where we can launch multiple providers from Cape Canaveral, you know, within a, a day period. I don't know what the limiter is right now, but just they haven't gotten the, the range and the, the suppliers and the refueling and, and all the infrastructure, it's just not there yet to speed up launch operations like that. So there is actually a legitimate concern when it comes to not only the number of launches that could interfere with national security and also the concern that there might be an accident that stops everything. That's where you get like the infrastructure built up. Because again, SpaceX is not doing 120 Starship launches out of Cape Canaveral next year. It's going to be a gradual process as SpaceX ramps up, as the vehicle becomes ready, as the mission dictates. I trust the FAA process that they are going to take all these things in consideration and put together a plan so that we can get these launches happening safely and ramp up. Blue Origin was founded by Jeff Bezos, who had a mission, a vision of having millions of people live and work in space for the benefit of Earth. And that's not millions of people living and working in space for the benefit of Earth only if Blue Origin launches them. That is a going to be, by almost necessity, a group effort where you do have multiple launch providers working together and competitively to launch. So if Blue Origin is true to their mission that they want millions of people living and working in space, they should not be trying to hobble their competitor. They should not be trying to get the government to limit launch operations. They should be working together with their competitor and really truly focusing on their own business and ramping up their own business, getting New Glenn operational so that they can be part of that vision that Jeff Bezos put out there. Imagine that future. That's the future that I'm working towards. That's the future I want to live in. I really hope the employees of ULA and Blue Origin feel the same way and are working towards that same future.